Nurses in some counties keep off hospitals and take to the streets. Up to date, there is nothing that they have offered. So we have said as nurses of Elgea Maragua that we will be on strike. Seize the industrial action and submit before the committee, process the matter with a view of getting solution. Counties divided in their response to the nurses' strike. Also tonight, probe over how billions of shillings meant for a Catraco project allegedly went into officials' pockets. Plus, the week-long search for Mildred Odira ends at the city mortuary. It was like uh, she was murdered, then taken to a road, then the vehicle ran over. And on a radiologist's flight, no presence. Just know it, it's heavy. In its literature, like no presence means as in they have tried, they can redo it again and they won't find. A tale of battle and triumph over cancer. NTV Tonight with Tbriti Vidyarthi. It's nine o'clock. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Flora Atieno. Now, the delivery of health services was disrupted in a number of counties within the country, heralding the return of tough times for those seeking medical attention in public hospitals. Well, the nurses made good their threat to down their tools, disregarding a declaration by the Labour Cabinet Secretary that industrial action amidst negotiations is against the law. Charity Mwangi has the details on what's happening in the health sector across the country. Health services were paralyzed in all health centers in El Geo Maraquet as the anticipated Nasi strike kicked off this morning in up to 11 counties. Patients were turned away in a familiar fashion as it happened two years ago, prompting the government to agree to a return to work formula that is the bone of contention now. Up to date, there is nothing that they have offered. So we have said as nurses of Elgea Maragua that we will be on strike. The situation was the same in West Pokot with nurses expressing their discontent with their working conditions. <laughs> Elsewhere in Kitui County, the county government has threatened to fire nurses who failed to report to work. They have deemed the strike illegal, advising those who had failed to report to work today to quickly rethink their decision. We have agreed uh, through the governor, she has given directive that any person who has not come to work, uh, we must get a replacement. Meanwhile, Conciliation Committee, constituted by Labour Cabinet Secretary Ukur Yatan, has begun its work. The committee will seek to resolve the impasse between the nurses and the national and county governments. The CS urged all parties to consider the good of the country in their deliberation, recommending that the union calls off the strike. You are expected to seize the industrial action and submit before the committee, process the matter, with a view of getting solution. But if the parties are here, and at the same time have appealed to their members to continue with the industrial action, that is in breach, in breach of the law. Speaking on phone to NTV, Kenya National Union of Nurses Secretary General Seth Panyako said that the exemption of representatives from the county government may be a detriment to the talks. The county governments have nominated COG. At the same time, they have also represented a body of CEC members representing health, the subcommittee on health, are going to be in this meeting. The conciliation committee has asked both parties to present memoranda on their grievances by Thursday to allow the committee to have a better grasp of the areas of contention as far as the return to work formula of 2017 is concerned. According to the nurses, more than 20 counties are yet to honor the agreement that resolved the strike in 2017. In Kiambu County, Governor Ferdinand Waititu signed an agreement with the Nurses Union that laid out a plan to meet the promises that the counties and the Ministry of Health made to the Nurses. This averted the strike that was to begin on the 6th of this month. The return to work formula entitled an increase in the nursing service allowance of 3,000 per month in the financial year 2018-2019, 3,500 per month 
in the year 2019, 2020, and a further 3,500 per month in the year 2020 stroke 2021. It also entitled a uniform allowance increase of Kenya shillings 5,000 per year in the three phases. Yesterday, the Rakanidhi County government was able to arrive at a similar agreement with the Nazis. Charity Mwangi, NTV. All right, from that story, let's bring you the latest from the Director of Public Prosecutions. And he has told the Anti-Corruption Court that he has evidence outlining how an expenditure of 5.6 billion shillings was irregularly incurred in the purchase of white maize by the Ministry of Agriculture. The DPP also says he will unearth a conspiracy between public officers and maize traders who fraudulently acquired public funds through irregular supplies at the National Cereals Board in the Eldoret Depot. And to Seth Olale has the details. In his opening statement, Senior Prosecution Counsel Henry Kinanjui told the court that the 5.6 billion shillings was beyond the approved budget at the Ministry of Agriculture's Strategic Food Reserve Oversight Board, contravening the provisions of Public Funds Management Act of 2012. The prosecution further said it has evidence showing how 468 million shillings meant to benefit registered and vetted farmers was fraudulently acquired by public officers and maize traders through irregular supply and purchase of maize at the NCPB. Chief Magistrate Teresia Murigi further heard that there was failure by the accused persons, led by the Agriculture Principal Secretary Richard Lesiampe, to put in place prudent management and control measures to ensure that only registered and vetted farmers benefit in the purchase of maize according to the NCPB guidelines on grain intake operations. Documents including Weybridge tickets were irregularly altered in favor of various traders during the purchase of maize under the Strategic Food Reserve in the year 2017 and 2018. The ministry should be able to confirm whether they were part of it. Prosecution witness Francis Anona, who is also the director of budget at the National Treasury, was also cross-examined. How did this situation, you know, the uh, food shortage, how did it affect your budget? Obviously, if the State Department of Agriculture does not have the kind of allocation that would procure all this, then they will now write to the National Treasury, okay, to make that formal request. Another witness who was also lined up by the prosecution will take to the witness stand on Tuesday when the trial continues. Other than the two prosecution witnesses present in court today, the Director of Public Prosecution, Nurgin Haji, has lined up 11 others who he hope will enable him to produce watertight evidence in order to convict the accused persons. Seth Olale, NTV, Milimani Locots. The Directorate of Criminal Investigations is probing possible collusion between Kenya Electricity Transmission Company officials and landowners to determine how hundreds of millions of shillings were spent to acquire land exorbitantly that power lines were built on. An exclusive investigation by the Nation Media Group also reveals that millions of shillings was lost during the construction of the 482-kilometer line through poor planning and wastage. But in a response sent to newsrooms, the company attempted to explain itself out of the mess. But as Ken Majungu reports, their statement did not disclose much. Companies paid without proper documentation or no documentation at all, inflated figures resulting from engineered valuation reports and laid collusion between Ketraco officers, contractors and landowners. The hallmark of a scandal this one will cost the taxpayers more than 14 billion shillings. Documents in our position show that the compensations went to the right landowners, but investigators believe most of the money ended up in the pockets of Ketraco officers. And now the investigators want the officers who handle the transactions charged with willful failure to follow the law. 
the Center of Attention for the Investigators are land compensation documents relating to the 482-kilometer stretch of the Mombasa-Nairobi power line. This is also by far the biggest project undertaken by Ketrako. An internal audit by Ketrako on the project indicated that the Savo Embakasi phase was delayed by four years and six months, delays that had huge cost implications as the contractors claimed their overheads, idling equipment and manpower, stoppages, acceleration, mobilization and demobilization. The audit also revealed that the supply line and the substations were vandalized even before they were completed and that a transmission line with an installed capacity of 950 megawatts, was only performing at 2% its capacity. In their response, Ketraku says the cost of construction included wayleave compensation, which translated to 18.45 billion shillings, 15.89 billion shillings being the construction cost, and 2.56 billion shillings at the cost of the wayleave compensation. Ketrako also says the delayed completion of the project was due to numerous stoppage of construction works by landowners and communities, lengthy negotiations with landowners and court cases. The project began in December of 2010 and ended seven years later in July of 2017. Ken Mijungu, NTV. All right, now for those of you who perhaps don't know, today is World Cancer Day. And on this specific day, let's just bring things into focus and look at cancer in context. Here are some facts and figures. Now, in 2018, a staggering 47,887 reported cancer cases were uh, reported here in Kenya. In 2017, the disease claimed 16,953 lives. Now, the main causes are people's lifestyles, which include excessive alcohol consumption, high fat diets, and also excess smoking. The environment also plays a part. For example, if you're in a hazardous workplace, and also environmental pollution can cause a cancer. Now, coming up on your screens, the most common types of cancers. Lung cancer takes the first slot, followed by liver and then colorectal, stomach and then breast cancer as well. Now, some of the challenges surrounding cancer include funding and expertise. Now, the government has been trying to address the issue when it comes to funding. Uh, the national government allocated 7.4 billion shillings uh, to cancer-related cases um, here in Kenya in 2018 and 2019. But globally, as you can see, 118 trillion shillings is the economic burden caused by cancer. When it comes to expertise, there are very few oncologists here in Kenya, and an oncologist is essentially a cancer specialist. All right, well, how can you help yourself? These are some of the preventable measures. Exercise and also control your weight. Avoid excess smoking. Don't indulge too much in alcohol and also have a diet that is rich in fruit and vegetables. One other thing that you can do to help yourself and others is also awareness. Be informed and also spread the correct information. All this information coming to us courtesy of the Nation Newsplex. Well, in commemoration of World Cancer Day, we now bring you the story of Shienze Kasoha, a cancer survivor. Now, at only 25 years of age, she has both battled but also triumphed over cancer, having received news of her triumph only a week ago. So on NTV Tonight, she now narrates how she mustered the will to firstly fight and what her new lease on life means. I think 2017, until when I campaigned, 2017 before campaigns. So I used to see a guy now, then another guy now told me, you know what, I think we can see some things in your in your in your ovaries. We don't know if it's fibroids. I'm like, you see, when a doctor tells you I don't know, that's high level of negligence. So you just use uh, another equipment and just check what what is happening, you know. So they told me I don't know if it's uh, fibroids. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe what you could do, you could give birth. If you get pregnant and give birth, you will you will be okay, you know. So I went and told my mom, imagine this doctor, I'm not going to go to this doctor again because a doctor cannot tell me to give birth now, 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 now. I'm not even 
pregnant i'm not even looking to get a baby right now i was just i think i was i was 22 so i got another kind of so we did the the ultra pelvic ultrasound and then they could they could see it's not cyst and it's not fibroids and it's not all those things they, they think it is but there's something at the ovaries you know and then we go to realize it's cancer in my mind I was telling myself like if I know it's cancer I'll be settled you know I'll be settled but now when I go to realize it's cancer I will not settle because now I'll know first thing that came into my mind is because my family will not be able to afford this. So this is a gateway to die. At that time also, when I got to realize I, I was sick, I was also looking very healthy. I had grown in size. I used to be a size 6, 8. I was now about 12, 14. So many people, even when they I was telling them I'm sick, they weren't getting it serious. They thought, you know how the African culture, once you grow fat, you 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 unatengeneza pesa you have money you're living a good life so now it's getting forms for harambees it was it was frustrating it was frustrating so um i now started approaching people and when you approach people they tell me ah if you have if you if they tell you kenyan proverb come on get ambia jana ningekuwa mtu hata nimetoka tu kutumia mtu size ya pesa so i'm like okay sawa so i said i want to I won't do the chemo treatment, I won't do anything. I will just let myself die softly. I think when I look at my sister, my sister is this young. She just joined school. Mm -hmm. This lady is looking up to me and my mom. I just get, I just, I, I was willing to fight because of them, not because of me. Because I was like, what happens to them? How would their life be? Uh, along the way, I just decided I wouldn't listen to anyone. I'll go see to the oncologist. He will chat away forward for me. Now my my weight also had really had really increased. I was now I remember even it was worrying me. I was now at 94 from 55. Hey, I wake up today. I'm says 12. The cloth I wore yesterday. If I wake up in the morning, I can't wear it. So. It was, it was really, it affected my self-esteem. So when I finished, and I finished the tablets, I was like, I think now we can, we can check out if I'm okay or something. But I was so nervous. So I remember I woke up so early when I went to Agakan Hospital. So early, I was at Agakan at, don't laugh, I was at Agakan by 4.30 a.m. I looked at the results. Tumors are clear. You know, it's a very well. If you've seen results before, when a doctor writes or on a, or a, on a radiologist writes, no presence. Just know it, it's heavy. If it's literature, like no presence means as in they have tried, they can redo it again, and they won't find. But yeah, that's the story. What a strong woman, woman rather, hats off to her and to all the cancer survivors out there. And if you are battling cancer, get some inspiration from um, Shienzi. All right, well, from that story to one with a tragic ending. The body of Mildred Odira, who has been missing since last week, has now been found at the city mortuary. From records at the morgue, the body was received at the facility on Tuesday, the very day that she went missing. The taxi driver who was taking her to hospital has been arraigned. NTV Sharon Baranga reports on the family's tragic end to their search. This was the last place Mildred's family was hoping not to find their loved one. But as fate would have it, Mildred's body was brought here by police from Kasarani on the very day she went missing. So we came here in the morning to find out if she may have been brought to this facility. To our surprise, we found her. So it was like uh, she was murdered, then taken to a road, then the vehicle ran over her. Mildred Odira's body was found by the roadside on Thika Road near the General Service Unit footbridge at Allsops. A post-mortem is set to be conducted Tuesday.
We have actually viewed the body and uh, evidently that is a direct case of murder. She has a, a very sharp deep wound here. There is another deep wound here. And then it looks like after she was hit by some sharp object here and here, then she was thrown uh, on the road for a vehicle to run. So she is, the body is broken all over. She She's, there's a very severe wound here, she has a wounds, uh, the legs are broken and then uh, the trouser is torn and it looks like her panty was also pulled down, so we don't know yet what the intention is. Mildred, an employee of Foresight Innovations Limited, but seconded to Nation Media Group, went missing in the wee hours of Tuesday after a taxi driver identified as Davis Oching picked her from her place in Kariobangi South Estate to take her to Ruaraka Neema Hospital in Kasarani. This is the car that Oching picked her up with. It is being held at the Kasarani police station. The taxi driver was arraigned at Milimani where he denied charges of kidnap. This was before the deceased's body was found. The investigators sought to hold him for 14 days, but the court granted seven days. He is to appear on 13th February where he may answer to different charges given the developments. The Nation Media Group has extended its deepest condolences to family, friends and the entire Foresight Innovations Limited fraternity, adding that thoughts and prayers go out to them. The firm has described Mildred as a hardworking and diligent employee committed to service delivery and excellence. Sharon Baranga, NTV. Well, condolences and strength to Mildred's family. May her soul rest in peace and may justice be served. Elsewhere, two more brands of peanut butter have been found to have higher than acceptable levels of aflatoxin. Now, in addition to Nutties, peanut butter brands by Triclover and Mother Nature's were tested and found to have exceeded the maximum limit for aflatoxins, which is 15 parts per billion. Triclover's brand is Clover's Nuts, with the smooth variety having an aflatoxin level of 36.44, while the chocolate one had a whopping 44.25 parts, almost three times the maximum. Mother Nature's level of aflatoxin is 27.26. Now, for nutties that's manufactured by Jetlag Foods, the Kenya Bureau of Standards took samples for testing and has indeed confirmed that the level of aflatoxin is 25.13 parts per billion. Keb says it has suspended the firm's permits to trade these specific brands that have been found to be unfit for human consumption. Excessive consumption of aflatoxin leads to liver damage. Twenty-two minutes past the hour. Time for a quick break. More when we return.
Yeah. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Gatundu South MP Moses Kuria now wants Parliament to set up a new committee that will oversee the implementation of the President's executive order. And he further proposes to chair the 27-member committee that will also include the House leadership. But even as he prepares a motion to present before Parliament when it opens next week, Majority Leader in the National Assembly, that's Aidan Duale, accuses Kuria of seeking cheap publicity. This particular. As Parliament resumes next week after a long recess, the politics that have dominated conversations during that period is likely to take center stage. One such is the President's executive order that was in some quarters seen as a way of clipping the Deputy President William Ruto's wings. A suggestion by Gatondo South MP Moses Kuria to have a new standing committee, Parliamentary Development Oversight Coordination Committee, is likely to reignite the political aspect of the executive order. In his motion addressed to the Speaker of the National Assembly, Kuria argues it is critical that Parliament plays a key role in enforcing the executive order. He outlines four terms of reference for the committee. He says the committee should coordinate legislative and budgetary expectations, coordinate efficient and timely flow of information from MPs in their constituencies, offer requisite political and communication support, and create linkages between MPs and the structures under the executive order. Kuria has gone ahead to propose himself as the chairperson of the 27-member committee that includes the House leadership from across the political divide and chairpersons of committees. However, the standing orders are explicit. Chairpersons of committees cannot be in more than one committee. But Kuria insists his is just a proposal as the final word rests with the House. Majority leader Aidan Duale, in a telephone interview with NTV, laughed off the proposal by Kuria, saying it was a way of seeking publicity and it will most likely not see the light of day. Duale says, since the motion is from a private member and not from any political formation, it has to pass through the necessary process, and that is taking it to the House Business Committee. Then it has to be on the queue for consideration as there are other requests. He adds, the earliest it could be considered, if at all, is either June or July. Duale also says most of Kuria's recommendations towards the standing committee are being catered for by other line committees. Kennedy Moredi, NTV. Now, human rights lawyer Harun Dubi has once again been caught on the wrong side of the law. Dubi was today charged before the traffic court in Nairobi for drink driving. Now, he was arrested on Sunday evening at around 11.30 p.m. along Langata Road. The prosecution told senior resident magistrate Ellen Riani that the city lawyer hit a motorcycle belonging to police constable Simon Mungai, who was injured in the process. Now, he's also accused of refusing to obey verbal directives by traffic police and declining to blow into a breathalyzer. While well, appearing in court today, Ndubi, through his lawyer, John Kaminwa, sought to have the taking of a plea deferred. The court ordered the lawyer to deposit a cash bail of 80,000 shillings pending the mention of the case on Tuesday. Elsewhere, seven suspected robbers were last night shot along Mombasa Road during a botched robbery at a gas filling plant along Enterprise Road. Now, the dead were among a gang of about 20 who had stalked out the plant before taking it over. They roughed up the workers, tied them together and locked them up in a bathroom. One worker, however, escaped and alerted the police. Four suspects were arrested while others escaped with gunshot wounds. Another suspect was arrested in Buruburu, where he had gone to seek medical attention. Now, in the vehicle they were using to carry the gas cylinders, one pistol, two toy guns, one radio call unit, and several crude weapons were recovered. They, were, they, 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 they came to this scene where a shootout has occurred among the gangsters and the officers. Uh, we have a number of uh, fatalities as a result of a uh, shootout and the recovery of a uh, firearm and some uh, crude weapons. The officers, as you are seeing, they are still inside, carrying out the necessary investigation, including the forensic. So that is what I can tell you as of now. 
the investigation is going on. There has been uh, also arrests, which they are yet uh, to identify. Traders in Kisarian in Kajiado County have been left counting losses after a fire torched property estimated to be worth more than 10 million shillings. The fire broke out at about 2 a.m., starting at a room where a group of youth were playing pool, after which it further spread to adjacent buildings. No casualties have been reported, but traders have to start their businesses afresh after the huge loss. The locals have called upon the county government to create more fire stations and add more equipped firefighting trucks so as to contain such incidents faster. Police are still conducting investigations to establish the cause of the fire. Kilakitutumesevatamoja, <laughs> And in other news, a Nairobi court has ordered that seven suspects linked to the terror attack at 14 Riverside Drive be remanded for another 18 days. Trial Magistrate Martha Mutuku says the prosecution had proven its case to warrant a further detention of Hassan Nul, Ismail Sadiq Abitham, Ali Kamis Ali, Abdinur Malim Osmail, Abdullahi Muhammad Hassan, Sophia Njoki Mbogo and Isaac Omar Muhammad. The state had requested for 30 days, but the suspects have already spent 12 days in custody. Ismail is accused of having 52 M-Pesa accounts, 47 of which are operational and had been used to withdraw huge sums of money. Hassan, meanwhile, is accused of aiding Vivian Kemunto, the wife of attacker Ali Gishunge, to escape to Somalia. It is half past nine. You're watching NTV Tonight with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Do stay with us. Coming up, it's Julian's with the business news.
it's time for your daily look at the world of business. Welcome, I am Julian Amboko. Partner states of the East African community will later this year determine whether to sign the economic partnership agreements with the European Union once they get a clear understanding of how the deal operates. This points to consensus that the ESC will not ascend to the EPAs as, as a regional bloc, but as individual nations. Heads of state at the 20th Ordinary Summit of East African Community received a report from Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni and decided that the ESC engages the EU on the matter in the next four months to get more clarification on the issues of concern. Negotiations on the EPAs have been a protracted affair, with the Brexit showing signs of being a readiness ship at present. The ESC leaders seem to have opted to play a waiting game. The EPAs will provide a framework of how, to trade, how the trade with the EU will be conducted. The ESC heads of state met in Arusha, Tanzania. Elsewhere, the Kenya Auto Bazaar Association, Kaba, has asked President Uhuru Kenyatta to put on hold the implementation of the government's plan to reduce the age limit of imported motor vehicles into the country in a phased sequence. Kaba terms the move as discriminative. Victor Kiprop now reports on the growing controversy surrounding the policy that seeks to slash the age limit of imported cars with engine capacities above 1.5 litres from 8 to 5 years and what it means for the country. For the East African region, which has for the last 10 years tried to reduce the age limit for imported cars to five years with little success, Kenya's latest announcement that it would begin doing so in July is a much needed inspiration. <laughs> ndio sasa safety ya barabara iwe enhanced alafu lakini mtanunua magari locally assembled the draft national automotive policy seeks to limit the age of imported cars with engine capacities of above 1.6 liters from the current 8 years to 5 years in the second half of the year and then to 3 years by 2021 an idea that does not sit well with the Kenya Auto Bazaar Association we are opposing seriously opposing the introduction of that policy because uh, the whole thing is just uh, copy paste from uh, uh, KMI, that's Kenya Motor Industry Association. The draft policy aims to support the growth of the automotive industry in Kenya in a bid to scale up exports to the East African community from the current 5% to 15% by 2022. In a letter to the president, the association is of the opinion that the local assembly of motor vehicles lacks the capacity to meet the annual demand. Look at the, the national uh, consumption of new cars. It's standing about 12,000 units. And yet for second hand, it stands at about 85,000. Currently, even they cannot meet the demand. Last uh, 2018, they assembled a total of 10,000 units. And yet the country requires 85,000. Brand new vehicles from overseas cost about 40% more and attract significantly higher taxes, part of the reason why imported cars made up 85% of the 2.2 million cars on East African roads as at 2015. Victor Kiprop, NTV Business. Ekeza Sako chairman David Gary Elias Gakuyo is protesting a directive barring him from auctioning his property and is now demanding full autonomy of the society. Gary refuted claims that the plans of selling his property to flee the country and has now asked the government to stop interfering with the Sako's operations and allow him access to its accounts to enable him to refund members their money. Lilian Kiari with the latest on the troubled society. In the past, when Ekeza Sako members sought an audience with Gakuyo, he fled the scene. But now, with pressure mounting on him, he has been forced to come out of hiding and address the pressing issue, this time with humility and leaning on his church ministry to sanitize his stained character. I am a man of Korah, man of cloth. I am genuine. I am but despite contravening the law, amongst them illegally opening the common bond, Ngare is not shy to make bold demands. Nifuguriwe account, mimi nipatiwe license, let me deal with my members, wacha mimi niuze marizangu, 
and give back the members. Akienda kotini nisiuze, yeye mwenyewe atanionyesha jia ambayo nita rudisa hizo pesa kwa wanaichi. Ngare's response comes after Industry, Trade and Cooperatives Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya instructed the Commission of Cooperatives to stop him from auctioning his property through a court of law to allow for the completion of an ongoing inquiry into the SACO. As this transpires, cooperative leaders have asked the government to work with the SACO Society Regulatory Authority to crack the whip on the societies which are tainting the image of the industry. Here we require the honesty and dedication from the board of the directors because they are the one ambayo wamepewa njukumu na the recruited, recruited members to make sure they manage that circle prudently and to make sure it is within the required law. With a looming uncertainty over these new developments, Ekeza SACO members will now have to wait up to the 21st of February when the Commission of Cooperatives will convene a special general meeting to let them know on the fate of their society. Lillian Kiarie, NTV. Let's move on to matters aviation. Service delivery at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, JKIA, could be paralyzed in the next few days as the Kenya Aviation Workers Union insists that the planned strike will proceed. The workers issued a strike notice on January 29, 2019, opposing the planned takeover of JKIA by Kenya Airways. The strike notice elapses at midnight on Tuesday and will, invo will involve flight crew and workers at duty-free shops. Most of the members of the union are Kenya Airways staff excluding pilots. Kenya Airways submitted its bid for the takeover of JKIA in December 2018 as part of a restructuring process aimed at improving its performance. Hotel in the world. Yeah. Nowhere in the world where you have a, an airport being run and managed by an airline that is in private hands. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If you go to Ethiopia, Ethiopian Airlines is 100% owned by the government. Yes. Then the airport is 100% owned by the government. Yes. 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 Managing integration risks such as the blending of operational systems and retaining customers is one of the key challenges that the CBA NIC merger will face in the days ahead. According to ratings agency Moody's, this will be an area of significant interest as the two banks look to bring forth an entity that leverages synergies and is more profitable than the two banks separately. The merged entity is expected to commence operations in the third quarter of 2019. Time to see how the financial markets did. It's time for the financial report. NTV Financial Report, in association with the University of Nairobi. TV Financial Report in association with the University of Nairobi. Apply online through applications.unbi.ac.ke and be the first to secure admission at the most prestigious university in Sub-Saharan Africa. And that's it for the business news tonight. Let's do this again tomorrow, same time.
President Uhuru Kenyatta this afternoon hosted a goodwill delegation of elected leaders from Kajiado County. The president cautioned the leaders against divisive politics, urging them to embrace one another irrespective of their political leanings for the common good of all citizens. The delegation, which included members of parliament, was led by Kajiado Governor Joseph Olelenku. Now, President Kenyatta asked the leaders to develop a genuine list of Kajiado County residents who need title deeds for their pieces of land in support of the government's ongoing titling program, which is being slowed down by confusion and competing interests. And elsewhere, female genital mutilation is among the reasons why some women choose not to compete against men for positions in society. Well, this is according to Youth and Gender Affairs Cabinet Secretary Margaret uh, Kobia, who says the practice makes women feel insecure. Speaking during the second anti-FGM national conference held in Narok County, Kobia said that no government would like to see its women and girls suffer politically, emotionally or socially because of under undergoing the retrogressive cultural practice. The government is looking to eradicate FGM by the year 2030. Well, leaders from Narok, which has been known for the large number of cases of the practice, have vowed to step up and sustain the war against it. And that brings us to our sports break. Do stay with us. It's the news being brought to you by Ida Waringa. win, Gorma here leads the standings in Group D of the CAF Confederation Cup with Algeria's Hussein Day second tied on three points with Kogalo after beating Petro Atletico from Angola 2-1. Meanwhile, Poma Harambe Stars coach Marshall Mulwa believes Kenya's all-time top scorer with Harambe Stars, Dennis Oliech, has a big role of impacting and nurturing upcoming strikers to be better than him. 34-year-old Oliech has scored 34 goals for the Stars. Oliech amerejea uwanjani tena ili umelipokeaje? Anaweza. Una vitu vingine unaweza unaangalia kwamba unaona hapa wa, mpaka waone wa, waone mfano. Oliech alikuwa mchezaji mzuri. Hatari. Alikuwa ni mchezaji mzuri. Na Mungu ambariki na aendelee akuze ahakikishe ya kwamba amewaleta wengine wawe bora zaidi ya kile
Now, there will be new champions crowned this weekend at the Nyanza Regional Games of the Chapidimba and Safaricom. They will climax with the finals at Amoy Stadium, Kisumu. In the boys' semis, Nyamira Springs will play victory strikers from Kisi, while Korea's Nyamaharaga face Manyata boys. In the girls' category, Manyata girls will face Kisi United, while Migori Education Center take on NCEOD Queens from Homer Bay. The defending champions Plateau Queens and Ombek Red Devils exited the tournament at the group stage. The regional winners will receive a cash reward of 200,000 shillings each and the chance to represent the region in the tournament's national finals. The competition will then move to the Rift Valley Eastern Coast Central, Northeastern, and Nairobi regions as the race to La Liga heats up. The tournament aims to scout for gifted players from the grassroots. Still on matters local, Bandari FC showed their dominance to return to second place on the standings as the only unbeaten records kept were crashed in match day 11 of the Kenyan Premier League. The Dockers, a 4-1 skinning of AFC Leopards, saw them close the gap on leaders Mathare United to three points with a game in hand. Mathare and Kariobangi Sharks and beaten runs ended. The Slam Boys being edged by bottom-placed Mount Kenya United 2-1 as Kariobangi Sharks lost 2-0 at home to Sofa Paka, who in turn moved to fourth on 17 points courtesy of that win. Tasca remain in third after a barren draw away at Poster Rangers, who are currently second from bottom. Meanwhile, Chamelil Sugar lies 16th on the log with eight points after a one-all draw with Olinzi Stars. Bottom boys Mount Kenya United stay firmly rooted in 18th despite that stunning result over the league leaders. To the English Premier League now and Liverpool take on West Ham United at the London Stadium tonight hoping to regain their five-point lead having been cut down to two points with Manchester City's win over Arsenal. The Reds began the weekend five points clear and know that only victory will do against a West Ham side poor in four. Dennis the Menace Oliage scoring in his debut at the CAF Confederation Cup Group D opener at Kasarani. His goal coming 21 years after his late brother Steve Okumu scored for Gore against Zamalek in a replica of the fixture brought back memories of what the menace still has in him. That is our moment of the weekend.
Hiyo mbame nifurahisha ni hiyo adono Oliech Oliech amato arabu chini mana Kwa maliza He's a legend uh, It's really brought back the memories uh, That used to give us the nice memories The Rambo stars We need Oliech back Yes and, and we're also going to ask that. Are you recording? Walo watu wa goruma ya wote. Waende arambe stars. That was a fantastic game to watch. I mean, just watching Gorma here, Coach Hassan Okta, jump onto Dennis Oliech's back just gives you an indication about the passion involved. Well, that wraps it up on Sports Tonight. We play again tomorrow. I'm Aida Waringa. Back to you, Smirti. Ida, thanks very much. Of course, more sports and news coming your way tomorrow in our subsequent broadcasts. But for now, do stay tuned. Press Pass with Mark Messiah is coming up next and the regulation of social media forms the basis of his conversation. It's 10 o'clock. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Good night.